Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Grab a seat this time. Invite the children. My name is Leo Espada. I'm with GoneWithTheWind.com, and today we're looking at Slime Rancher, an early access game that has hit Steam uh, about a week or two ago. I'm actually really excited about this game. It has a wide, broad range appeal. I think a lot of different age groups uh, and gamers are going to like it. It reminds me, in a lot of ways, of the old... Uh, console game of the last generation, Viva Pinata 1 and 2, which I liked a lot, my kids liked a lot. Slime Rancher is in that same vein. It's very cute. Keep in mind that the management aspects of this game rarely spiral out of control. It always maintains a casual approach still. The game offers you so many things to experiment with, and so many areas to explore, it masks any extreme challenges which I don't believe are necessary in a game of this type. The point of this game is to collect slime of various colors, bring them back to your ranch, and raise them. What makes these lovable creatures so valuable, you ask? Well, they poop money, literally. In exchange for feeding them, they drop valuable crystals. Yay. So getting to know their diet will help you build a steady stream of resources to continually feed these creatures, and they will continually poop for you. These poor crystals can be taken over to this exchange machine, shot inside, and automatically your account is applied the adequate resources. Now, as you can see, these colors have different values. So different creatures drop different color plorts that match the creature, and they have different values. At this stage in the game, I have several nocturnal creatures, and I've used my money to upgrade the solar tint, uh, netting, and large corrals so they don't fly away. How you spend your money will reflect the kind of farm that you have, obviously, since each creature has different needs, has different dietary demands. But overall, feeding them, maybe turning on the music for them, will keep them happy. Out in the wild is where you can replenish your resources, find more vegetables, pick up loose plort, and capture wild slime. Fortunately, there's just so much to explore. There are secret caves and nooks and other areas that are just not obvious at first glance. I've traversed these, this map many, many times and I am still finding new areas that were right under my nose. These new areas contain new slime, new vegetables, new fruits, other things to experiment and toy with that are worth your while. The game has a lot of hidden secrets and they don't spell out exactly how to solve them, giving room to plenty of experimentation in order to unlock some of the game's more interesting secrets. Combining different plorts with different colored slime will yield new creatures. In this case, this little guy is called a rock slime. And as he eats a gray tabby plort, he turns into a half kitty, half rock thing. Experimenting of this type will generate new creatures. Now, you got to be careful if you combine three colors, you'll end up with one of these terrors. They're called tar monsters. They eat you, they eat other slime. They can wreak all kinds of havoc in the game. Now, injecting them into the ocean is probably the quickest solution that I came up with for getting rid of them, but you can also invest in incinerators and drop anything you don't want inside of those things. These nasty tar monsters represent some of the dangers out in the wild, and care must be taken for, to have them not spawn in your own farm. This happened to me as I was trying to clear out some of these pink fireflies, which are I thought were nocturnal creatures, but apparently combining the blue nocturnal slimes with regular pink slime made them immune to sunlight. As they sat outside, they ate some of the other plort that were hanging around, and I had a visit from one of the tar monsters. Now these guys are aggressive. I try to get rid of them right away, but somehow they still keep combining and things get out of hand pretty quick, sort of. They can eat up your slime if you're not careful and just destroy uh, all the farming and harvesting you've worked on uh, over the last couple of hours. They are relentless, as you can see, they're trying to dig into my uh, corral there, but it has a net on top. So care must be taken to not have these guys uh, infest your farm. As I said earlier, Slime Rancher is an early access game. And the reason why I remind you again is because this game is very playable in its current state, very enjoyable with many hours of fun to be had. There are several sections of this game that are under construction. And you'll find them with the little construction icon uh, on the walls that 
shows a lot of promise that there could be a lot more areas coming to this game soon. Also, half the panels on the exchange machine were blank. There is a lot of room on there for new slime, new creatures to be discovered. The more content that, are, that is added to this game will certainly extend its appeal and its longevity. So looking forward to what the developers have in store and surely with community and gamer support, Slime Rancher could be one of the better games of 2016. Even at this early stage of the game, I experienced no crashing and pretty much no glitches except for this one where the day and night cycle just went completely haywire. Other than that, this is a very fun and highly entertaining game that appeals to the young at heart and those that are just young. What are you doing, baby? I'm trying to get the monies. Yes, I got monies. <laughs> I got monies. Hi, y'all. Yes. That was my four-year-old daughter, who's already a huge fan of Slime Rancher. It's going to be exciting watching this game develop and grow, and as content is added, and there's more things to explore and experiment with. I'm already very excited about this game, and I hope you're encouraged to give it a try. I have a feeling you're going to love it. This is Leo Espada with GoneWithTheWind.com. Thank you.